Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to a homeless man sharing the harsh truth about Skid Row. Now, Skid Row is a place I've not seen, although I do want to see it. Like, I probably will be in uh, LA later this year and I'm definitely going to try and see what it's really like there. But I've heard it's basically like a, a town full of homeless people living in tents on the road. And I wonder what it's like there, how to navigate the place if you're if you are homeless and you have to, you know, live amongst, you know, so many other homeless people. So I'm sure this video is going to share some new shed some new light on that for me. Yeah, so let's do it. Luke, yeah. we're here in Los Angeles. You're homeless. Tell me about it. Um, well, there's a lot to tell. Um, Los Angeles is a very, very crazy place. Um, I came here with my wife. Um, fam her family said, come on, um, we got on a uh, Greyhound bus, we came, we're on our way, we started calling the first day, we left, and no answer, we figured, just a fluke, uh, called the second day, no answer, and from then on, no answer, we what? haven't spoken to them since, you come here, hold on, so his wife's family invited them to live with them, they, then they arrived, and they didn't answer the phone, there's got to be more to that, and you, you come here and you get stuck and if you got nowhere to go and no real family to bail you out which me and my wife don't have you kind of are forced to go to Skid Row uh, Skid Row is by the bus station it's it's where all the shelters are it's where all the food is it's where all the resources are uh, located but Skid Row is a very nasty place um it, it, yeah go it, on it it will make it so you are constantly just worried about what you need to survive because everything's being taken from you. You're being taxed for living on certain streets. You have to pay. Um, basically, wow. drugs run most of Los Angeles itself, but especially Skid Row. Um, Skid Row um, hurt me in, in, in ways I can't ever explain. It, it made me do things, it made me see things that I wish I never would have seen. Um, what sort of things, if anyone who's watching this has been to Skid Row and seen it, what, what kind of stuff have you seen? Like, he says that he's seen things that he never thought he'd ever see. Like, what kind of stuff, like? It's amazing what people can do to other people. Um, you know, have to, I can't hear you with the tra traffic. It's amazing what people can do to other people. Um, I especially feel bad for the females here. They get used up in, in, in a whole different way. Um, my wife experienced that. Um, but ultimately, I've seen some great acts of kindness here. Um, I've seen some great things. The problem is you get trapped here. And people say, I panhandle for money. People say, get a job. Okay, well, if I had somewhere to rest my head where my stuff wasn't stolen, where I didn't have to worry about blankets, where I didn't have to worry about food, um, I might be able to get a job. But then also, I've been seen through this entire town now, and now I'm known as homeless. So to get a job, I have to leave the area. Um, I have nowhere to but I'm sure there's people that would still hire him even if they knew that he was homeless before. Like, if he managed to get somewhere to stay, like, why would that stop someone from hiring him? Shower daily, have nowhere to keep work clothes. Um, it's not as easy as get a job, you know? Um, and you don't get much sleep. No, right. Because you're in survival mode, and the other night I met somebody, and it's, she is a stone while yeah. I sleeping. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, well, that's a very funny uh, thing. Your shoes get stolen a lot while you're here. Um, <laughs> and who steals a homeless man's shoes? Your shoes can be completely worthless, and someone still takes them. And that's a really hard thing, because you wake up in the morning and you've got no shoes. Now you got to walk around where people throw broken glass, um, people piss on the, on the ground, cockroaches, um, and you got to look for shoes. And that's, that's very disheartening. It, that's one of the strangest things I've come across here. I've had shoes. They're completely worthless and stink so bad it's over and someone still takes them. Um, but it's also sharpened me. I don't miss a beat. There isn't too much. I'm, I'm pretty in tune with everything and everyone around me. Um, I'm a lot more aware than they are, I, I, I assume. Um, People who have spent time on the streets are very aware of their surroundings. You have to be. You have to be because if not, your surroundings will get you. You know, especially on Skid Row. You know, I don't go there at all anymore. Um, I, I broke from Skid Row about six months ago, and I haven't been there for a single thing. I broke from there. I wish there was a way to like reach out to someone like this and help him. You know, like if I knew that the the money would go directly to him, 
and he would use it for like food or shelter or whatever, I would genuinely help this guy. Because it's just, it's heartbreaking because he sounds like perfectly coherent, you know, intelligent. Like he could, he could turn things around like. For a reason somebody started trying to tax us um, just on panhandling, bringing money back. They wanted us to give them a percentage. And then they started doubling it and doubling it, doubling it until the number got so astronomical that there's no way anybody could ever pay. It. And it's extort. They're they're Extortion. threatening, yeah. they're threatening yeah. violence or whatever. Right. Right. If you don't pay the tax, they'll burn their tent down. You know, I've had 13 whole tents stolen. I I just got jumped the other day. I've been jumped 13 times, um, 10 of which I don't know the person or the person is completely absolutely insane and I still don't know them. And, or I've never even seen the person who hits me because they're robbing me in an alley, you know, and it's It's just it's been hard, you know, but you survive you find things like God you find things like yourself you Find what you're made of, you know, um You can't break me. You can't break my my my, my faith. Is like, anybody helping you? Yeah, not really not really really um, People throw me some money here and there some food here and there socks as you did um, but things are so expensive here as well like a hot dog behind me seven dollars you know how long it takes me to sit down and make seven dollars you know um everything but there's got to be affordable ways in in la to to get food are there places like in london there's places that you can buy food in a store like if i'm in a store i'll buy food and i'll put it somewhere and that's specifically for homeless people Similar things must exist in, in LA, right? Down here is a lot more expensive too. Well, so. People think you make all kinds of money panhandling. There are days I do. There are days I do all right. But that money goes really fast because it costs a lot to live. You know, especially with a wife, you know, three meals a day, you know, um, you splurge sometimes, socks, new clothes, you know, a shower is a really hard thing. Um, but what people don't understand. You know, this is not a job that gives you self-esteem. Yeah, no. Manhandling. No. Hey, people spit at you, call you yeah. names, oh, yeah. pour coffee on you. Yeah, right, right. You, but you have to be ready for that. Like, and it gets to the point where you, it doesn't even matter. You, you don't care because you need it so bad. Right. You know, and survival comes first. And we as human beings will do anything to survive. Yeah. You know? Now, is who the hell would spit at someone who's panhandling, or pour coffee at someone? Like that has got to be like one of the worst people ever to, that can do that. Like someone's like the lowest position in their life and you spit at them. Is like when I said anybody, any service providers, any homeless? They try, but I can't, keep, I can't keep a cell phone because it gets stolen. I can't keep a cell phone on charge when I do about it. Um, there are people that stop by once in a while and take down my name and my information and say they're gonna help. And then I see them again, maybe two or three times here and there. Or I see them again and they turn their head and walk the other way and feel uh, shame they didn't help me um, or couldn't help me. I have people that throw me $10, $20 and think that's going to solve everything. And next time they're mad at me because I'm off the street because they're turning $20. But I'm at a point where I'm stuck. This is what I do. Um, I've become comfortable with it. Um, I don't see no other way out. Like I said, I feel like I'm falling and never hitting a bottom or at least hitting a bottom that's false and every time I go to try to climb out that bottom's pulled for me and I fall more. If I could reach an absolute solid bottom I might be able to climb out but there is no real bottom because it's always it's always being pulled out from under you. You're always falling further. What's your future like? I'm not sure. That's in God's hands. God's in my hands you know because I do choose what I do you know but the opportunities that are out there are or harder when you're homeless and you've been seen as homeless. And when you have to do this all day just to eat, you know? Um, my story goes a little deeper than that. My wife got pregnant um, to uh, a prostitute. She's a prostitute. She got pregnant. Um, at the end of her pregnancy, she started having seizures. So she got diagnosed with brain cancer. So and she's scared to death of the treatment because the treatment's like 80% uh, risk of death. It's just, it seems like it can't get worse. It only seems like a soap opera. I've been jumped by the Cubans. <laughs> I've been... I can write a book. I can honestly write a book. You know? But the only thing I really have to say to anybody is just appreciate family. Because family is the one thing I don't have that might save me from this. Because when you mess up and you make a mistake, most people got family to bail them out. I don't because it's my wife. 
So we gotta eat this one on shelves. We gotta find our way out of shelves. And so appreciate family. They're the most important thing. And don't judge because a lot of these people are two missed paychecks and no family away from being right here. You know, and it can happen wow. really quick. It really can. Before you know it, and you're stuck. You know? If you had three wishes, what would they be? It's hard. It's hard. I haven't thought of, of, I haven't wished for anything in so long because I'm just worried about getting what I need. Um, that's a hard one. I, that, like, I wish for my wife to be better. I wish I had family. And I, I don't know what I'd do with the third. But I'd give it away. Wow. Man, that's heartbreaking, man. He'd give the third one away. Thank you very much for talking to me. You're very welcome. That was genuinely heartbreaking. I'm gonna look through, you know, the uh, comment section for that video and the uh, description to see if there's any way to help him directly. The video is quite old, but let me see here. So the video is, the video is four years old. So I'm hoping he's off the streets now. I really am. I'm gonna do everything I can to find out, you know, what's going on with him because that was really, really sad. What a situation to be in. He's so right though, you know, most people are, you know, two, two missed checks away and no support system and you could be hit in his, in his shoes. It's, wow, real eye opener. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.